Welcome to Fireside Chat on Friday and for our Jewish friends, depending on what time zone you're in, Shabbat Shalom to you. And I want to remind you that we are going to have communion at the end of the Fireside Chat today, so grab a bottle of grape juice and, and a, some bread. This is a Yehuda matzah-style squares. You don't have to have matzah bread. Any kind of bread is fine, uh, gluten-free or whatever. Just grab a cracker, grab some bread, and we're going to have communion as we, uh, as we close our time together. We're going to do this every Friday. And I, I just pray that you are standing in the peace of God. The Bible says uh, great people, we have great peace if our minds are set on him. He's promised us his peace, so let's stay in his peace. Uh, and again, as a, by way of reminder, all of our services are online Saturday night, the three Sunday morning services, Wednesday night, Tuesday women's ministry in the morning and the evening, and the evening men's prayer or, or men's uh, Bible study is also online. So hook up all through the week and get together with people on Zoom, Skype, however you can, encourage one another. But right now, Pastor Jonathan is going to take us into our Friday fireside chat. Let's hear it for Jonathan, everybody. Woo! I feel all alone here, almost, but my yeah. brother Jonathan's here. Um, that, that was, yeah, that was... Almost sad, but I know that there's at least some people probably at home that are, uh, that are clapping along as well. But hey guys, it's so glad to be with you guys today. Um, I honestly can say that I miss seeing you guys all around the church. Um, and man, I can't wait for that, the joyous celebration that we're going to have when we're able to come back together. Um, I just uh, I, I keep picturing uh, how exciting that's going to be to to see each other and when we can finally ignore the six foot social distancing and actually give a hug, a handshake, a high five, fist bump, and don't have to just wave at people from a distance. Uh, but I can't wait for that. Now we're in the second week of these fireside chats here, and in day I don't remember because I completely lost track of days. I'm, I'm seeing 10 in the back, thank you, 10-ish uh, days of our shelter in place here in California. But, um, you know, when I, when I look through this uh, time and, and, and one verse continually comes back to me, um, and it's a reminder of God calling us to enter his rest. In Matthew 11:28 28 through 30, uh, Jesus says, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Now, today, all of us joining in are, are, are doing that. We're pausing. We're taking a moment to rest, <clears throat> taking a moment to pause from our, our busy schedules to reflect upon what Jesus did for us 2,000 years ago. We're just about ready to head into the, the Easter season, and, and, and honestly, this is going to go down as one of the most unusual Easters, probably for any person who's watching this video. But one thing that hasn't changed from Easter last year, or the year before that, or any other Easter Sunday ever, is that we will be celebrating the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. And that is worth celebrating, right? Whether we're at home uh, with family or gathered together in a, as a whole congregation, that is something that we need to remember, that this is a celebration. But before he rose, obviously Jesus first laid down his life for us. And he didn't do this to, to give us a good life or to show us a, 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 a great example of how to live and, or how to love others. But he did it to pay the penalty for our rebellious life. Now, we've all sinned, the Bible teaches us. And we know this to be true. I mean, a quick, a quick uh, reading of the commandments of God will reveal it. I know personally I've lied, I've stolen, I've used God's name in vain in the past. And, and that's just three of the laws of God, right? Now, if I were to continue through the rest of the law, well, listen, I'm already guilty of breaking the law. Why, why continue the, the self-punishment, right? But Romans 6.23 tells us that the wages of sin is death. We earn death for the sins that we've committed. We deserve judgment from God. We deserve hell, but God doesn't want us to stay in that condition. Romans 5, 8 says, but God showed his love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. You see, Christ, Jesus came down to this earth, lived a perfect life, and sacrificed himself for us, paying our debt before God. And now we can be set free by a righteous God because our debt has been settled. All we need to do, it says, is to repent and believe. 
We must believe in the sacrifice of Christ and we must turn away for our sin, from our sins. And if we do that, we will inherit eternal life. And that brings us to communion today. Communion is a celebration, a time to remember the sacrificial death of Jesus on our behalf. 1 Corinthians 11 tells us, For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So when we take communion, we look back to the death of Jesus and celebrate it. But we're also looking forward to the coming return of Christ. And in light of all that's going on in this world, doesn't the return of Christ sound so much sweeter? Now before we get into taking communion together right now, there's a, just a, a couple of really quick points that I want to I wanna share with you. First, listen, we know that this isn't ideal. 1 Corinthians 11 mentions the taking of communion whenever we gather together. And here we are, scattered across hundreds of locations right now. We know that this communion is, in many ways, just a, a shadow of what our in-person communion celebrations are like. But, but that's okay because our in-person communion celebrations and church services and everything we do are nothing but a shadow of the coming kingdom of God where we get to celebrate the marriage supper of the Lamb with our, with our brothers and sisters, with believers from around the world and around, forget just 2020, believers from every age that we will gather together. So even when we gather together here at Refuge, right, our whole family is not gathered together because we have brothers and sisters around the world and we will gather together with them in heaven. And secondly, it's important to remember that we are all together spiritually. In Colossians 2, Paul tells the church there that for though I am absent in body, yet I am with you in spirit, rejoicing to see your good order and firmness of your faith in Christ. So as we take communion, let us remember that God's presence isn't restricted by physical walls. God's presence isn't restricted by social distancing, right? How sweet it will be when we gather together again for communion. Listen, we know it's better to be together physically as we celebrate communion. And Lord willing, we will be together soon. But for now, we gather in spirit, if not in body. This may be a shadow of our normal life, but that shadow is a reminder of the goodness that we have in Christ. So we're going to take communion now, and as we do that, let us celebrate communion together, even when we are apart from each other. walking and I usually when I walk I'll listen to music or I'll listen to an audible book or I'll listen to a YouTube or something like that and uh, this morning I'm just going to listen to the word of God and so I opened up my U, uh, my U version app and it was in first Peter chapter two and I thought well, I'm going to back up and and start at the beginning and it's exactly what you had just talked about Jonathan, where it starts like this, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the pilgrims of the dispersion. <laughs> and, and in other translations, it says to those pilgrims, those believers who are scattered all over the place. And that's where we are, but we know that we're one mm. in Christ by the blood of Jesus that we are going to celebrate right now. There, there was a song that um, I wrote a, a long time ago when Tom Lane was actually here with us. We sort of co-wrote this one. It was a communion song. And it starts out by, by saying, We will never forget what you did to redeem us. We will never forget how you bled to redeem us with this bread and with this cup. We remember you were lifted up and will never, no, never forget. And that's what we do right at this moment. The Bible says that that night, when Jesus was assembled with his disciples for that last supper, their last meal together. And those of, of, of you that were with me in Israel recently, and Rich Lang, hello to you and your family that are watching right now from Minnesota, maybe Dominic and Corey as well. But we walked those steps that Jesus walked that night, but he started like this at the table. He said, with fervent desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. He would never leave that suffering um, uh, information out of his talk with them as he neared the cross. He said, for I say to you, I will no longer eat of it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And then he took the cup. Yes, Jonathan and I have bigger cups. <laughs> and you can have as much juice in your cup today as you want, not the half an ounce that we typically give you. 
But he said this, he took the cup after supper and he lifted it up. Uh, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, we've we got to move down a little bit. That's how he started the, uh, the, the service with them that evening. It was the cup that he took. He said, take this and divide it among yourselves. I say, I will not drink of it uh, again until I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Verse 19, he took the bread and gave thanks and he broke it and gave it to them saying, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then, likewise, he also took the cup after supper. And this, he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. And so Jesus begins the meal by saying, guys, let's get started. He gives thanks and the meal begins as he lifts the first cup. And then later in the evening, he took leftovers off the table and he took the bread and he said, this is my body. It's broken for you. And then he takes a cup and he said, this is my blood. I'm going to ask Jonathan to lead us through on the, uh, on the, on the bread, if you would. All right. Again, he took the bread and when he gave it to him, he said, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So let us take the bread together, whatever you've got, a cracker, bread, doesn't matter what it is, but let's take the bread together as a reminder of the body of Christ broken for our sins. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Mm. Lord, we thank you. Mm -hmm. We thank you for your body broken for our sins. We thank you for the sacrifice, the, the, the perfect life that you lived to die on a cross in our place, to pay that debt that we couldn't pay. Mm -hmm. Lord, we thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And linger there for just a moment thinking about how Christ the son of God God the son the son that the father sent he came into this world and he became just like us he looked as human as any human ever he did miraculous things marvelous things but he was human just like you so he could be that that acceptable sacrifice he was acceptable and he was willing to do it he volunteered himself oh that night in the garden before what a weight of our burdens he carried upon himself mm, thank you lord mm. and then the bible says that uh and then he also took the cup after supper and he said this cup is the new covenant in my blood which is shed for you when paul would write about this in uh in first corinthians he said, as, as Jonathan took us to that passage, he said, as often as you eat this bread and you drink this cup, you preach, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So we get to proclaim this together at this point right now. So take the cup that you have on your table. Maybe you have some family gathered around you too. And look them in the eye right now and remind them. Tell them Jesus shed his blood for you. He shed his blood for us, Jonathan. Whew. Remarkable. Lord, we take this cup in solemn, sacred, celebratory remindery, Lord, rem reminding ourselves of what you did for us, Lord. It's more than a memory to us, Father. It is such a fortifying truth to know that our guilt has been lifted, our shame has been blown away by the power of the blood. And we take this in remembrance of Jesus and we proclaim our faith in his death and his resurrection as we partake of this together. We thank you for it, Lord. Take the cup and let's give thanks as you take in re with a sense of rejoicing what Jesus did for you. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. And uh, I, I just want to encourage you before I hand it back to, to Jonathan to, to close us off that uh, we are so thankful for you and thankful for what we hear uh, you're doing out there in the community. We got a, a text message. Joy got a text message from somebody she'd been praying with yesterday. Um, who And the woman was giving thanks for the Christian club that got put together on uh, her child's uh, middle school campus. And she said, I think Bethany had a lot to do with it. And she did. She kept reminding the, the principal, we, our kids would love to do this. 
And um, I just, and, and then I heard that those kids are gathering together in Zoom groups right now, encouraging each other in their faith. So find somebody today that you can text, call, whatever. I did that on my walk today. After listening to First Peter, I called a friend I hadn't talked to in 35 years or more. And uh, good old Mike Hurley back in Cincinnati. So find somebody you can encourage today. And may God bless you. And we'll be back on Fireside Chats next Monday. And this weekend on Saturday at 6 p.m. and then Sunday morning, 7, 39, and 11, live on refugefamily.com. Jonathan. All right, guys. Well, thank you guys for tuning in and for joining in. We're going to close with a word of prayer. And uh, Talbert Bible uh, Club there, awesome. I'm glad that you guys are still meeting and being able to gather together. And for all of you guys out there who are helping each other out, I've heard from so many people that they're Christians in their neighborhood are are working together and, and, and one person will run grocery runs and another is taking care of this and keep doing those things. Show the love of Christ for each other. As we celebrate communion, communion is about togetherness. And so be together even if we are apart. So let's pray and close us out. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for this day that we have to gather together um, in places all across our, 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 our state, our county, our, our country, truly, Lord. I thank you for the technology that allows us to do this, to be able to have communion together. And Lord, we pray for a swift return, that we'd be able to return together uh, as a body. We pray for those who are fighting uh, against this virus and those that are fighting it uh, in their own bodies as well, Lord. We pray for safety. We pray for healing. Heal our nation. Heal this land. Heal our bodies. We thank you and we praise you for all that you have done the wonderful gift that you gave of sending your son to die on a cross for our sins. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you guys. We'll see you next week.